Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com. In this video, I want to talk about taking advantage of our stereo space. Hey, we haven't been mixing in mono for like 70 years or something like that. Now, we have two speakers, let's use them. But how do we do this in an effective way? Well, I think the important thing is to consider what needs to be really solid, punchy, and forward, and then take a look at the elements that don't fit into that category and figure out how we can put them into a place that creates a wider atmosphere. All right, let's play a little bit of this record. So when I did the full mix breakdown last week, which I'll link up in the little tag thing, I mentioned that this particular element was one of the ones that I transformed, this main pluck. I did that by adding a pretty significant amount of reverb on there. If I take this out, We have a very solid, distinct left and right, which does take advantage of the stereo field, but it doesn't really take advantage of the in-between area. And to get a really scopic and full sound, we do want to take advantage of the space in between the left center and the right. So the way that I did that when I originally mixed this was pretty much by just putting this reverb on there. It also helped to kind of extend the note, which created a little bit more bedding for the record. So I'm going to throw this into mono without the reverb on there, and we're going to listen again. Musically, it still works, but sonically, it's not nearly as satisfying. Now, here I am with four, five more years of experience, maybe even six. I don't know how old I am anymore. Uh, with a lot more experience, and now I'm realizing that this element was actually doing a lot of the work unconsciously that I should have been doing consciously. So when I spread it out and I put the reverb on, we get that, that scopic stereo image. But... I could have filled in that stereo image with some other elements in some other ways, and I want to show you a couple of ways that we could do that. First of all, we have some peripheral percussion elements that are kind of neat, that I have panned off to the left and right. So I am taking advantage of the stereo image in that sense. I have uh, this percussion here. And I have this hi-hat here. which is naturally already a little bit left-leaning, but we could even go a little further. And go there. Okay, so that gives us some stereo spread, but what about the space in between? Well, one of the things that I can do is I can create reverbs off of those tracks. So here, just using the Valhalla Vintage Verb, which is a great reverb, and I'm using a fairly short decay on both of these, because I don't want to, like, wash over this record. This record needs to be punchy, so it needs to have that negative space in between the hits, but a little bit of reverb might be okay. So I generate reverb off of those two sounds, and I partial pan them a little closer to the middle. Turn those up real quick. So they're a little closer to center, maybe I'd want to take the hat out a little to the side, maybe move the percussion out a little to the side. So they're not hard left and right, they're kind of soft left and right. Once I couple those with the actual initial sounds, turn the reverbs down a little bit so that they don't wash out, there we go, bring in the initial sounds, the original sounds.
those reverbs help to kind of glue the sound back toward the center a little bit, which gives it, instead of having this like hard left and right image, it kind of has this conical left and right image. And when I bring that into the mix, We don't necessarily hear it as contracting the image, and we don't necessarily hear it as putting reverb onto our sounds. The reverbs are pretty low and subtle, but it does make the whole thing feel a little bit more connected, and it also kind of enhances the sense of spread, so it makes it a slightly more satisfying listen. It's more like a color than it is like a reverb, but it can be really useful. Now, another thing that we can do is we can take texture elements, things that, you know, might be musically relevant, but are not necessarily inherent to the musical movement of the record, and we can mess around with the stereo placement of those. So either using some kind of a partial panning or a moving panning can help to create a bigger sense and, and more scopic sense of imaging. So we have a really great element in this record for that, these beep boops right here. <laughs> Now I want to be really clear, this is a personality element. It is a very important element because it is giving the record its unique sound. However, if we remove this element, we lose the personality, but we do not lose the musicality. This is not a musically dominant element. So when I'm doing weird panning stuff, I'm looking for things that are more personality and texture. That's me personally. You might find musical elements where that works, and there are certainly records where it's, that's the case, but it's definitely easier to mess around with the pan scheme for something that isn't musically as important. So I have my left to right pan, and I've actually used the randomizer here to create a just totally bizarre and random sense of movement to this. Uh, I think it's better to have a rhythmic idea in mind. So if it was doing like bup, 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 like going left, going right, and creating a certain rhythmic movement in and of itself, that might be better. But I wanted to do this just with random movement, just to show that the idea still works and still holds true. So if I play over this section, you're going to hear it kind of dance around in weird ways. <laughs> So it's kind of all staying in sort of a left-leaning pocket, but it's kind of covering everything from maybe about 75% to the left to maybe just a little bit left of dead center. So it's kind of dancing around that whole range as opposed to just staying in one place, which makes it almost more of like an ambient kind of a texture because it has a less localizable sound. So in the mix, it sounds like this. Uh, I'll turn it up so that we can hear it really clearly. So obviously when it's turned up, it becomes a little distracting, but when it's in the background, it just makes the whole record feel like I'm sort of painting an image over on the left side, as opposed to having like this dotted pointed thing happening on the left side. Now to, to bring that home, you know, one of my favorite tools here is reverb. So I'm putting reverb on this as well. And part of the reason why I want to do that is because stereo imaging isn't just about the left and right. It's also about the front to back because we have two points. We can create the illusion of three dimensionality. And that is a really important consideration when it comes to stereo imaging. So I'm going to put this reverb on there. And I've put a lot on there because I want to show the point, but now when I bring it into the mix, it actually helps to bring the vocal and the snare forward by pushing something that has some similar frequency content to the back, which is a really important concept. It makes things a lot more interesting than if we were to jump over to here where that's not happening. I 
I didn't do this in the original mix. I kind of wish that I had played with it a little bit. Now, I, I have a lot of reverb on that sound right now. It's over a third reverb, but it doesn't sound crazy reverberant in context, actually, because of where that musical element is living in terms of the mix. Now, I do think I've gone a little, little overboard, but it does show the point that you can actually be pretty assertive with the amount of reverb that you're using on these kinds of elements that are meant to sort of smear the stereo image and create a more scopic look. So I'm going to turn this down to where I think it's probably going to be better, so maybe around like 20%, something like that. Si tu a mi me tiene temblando, como no, si yo a ti te tengo sudando, seguimos bajando. And now I would be tempted to say that maybe the beep beeps are a little bit loud, so I'm going to turn them down a hair. Si tu a mi me tiene And I think maybe I would want to play with it a little more because it's important for that element to both stand out and also sit back at the same time because it is a defining characteristic of the song, but at the same time it also clashes pretty heavily with the vocal. So definitely would require a little bit more tweaking to get it to sit just right. But I want to point out the the idea that just by creating that sense of smear and spreading it across the stereo image, we actually get a much bigger, more colorful, and more interesting record, even though these are subtle changes. Alright guys, I want to wrap up there. If you like this video, hit that like button if you want to catch more videos like this hit subscribe so that you get notified and you get to stay tuned and all that good stuff uh low end tutorial still for free when you sign up for the newsletter link in the description please do that check it out it will not be free after the new year so get it now while you can and lastly you know what we say here at weiss advice we are musicians sound is our instrument and i will catch you next time